I remember looking at the clock and I remember the feeling that I had in the pit of my stomach when the superintendent at the time called me and asked me if I would uh, leave the school. Like I realized at that moment that no more passing the book. I understood that anybody who came in this building now was my responsibility. And I didn't want to blow it. I know deep down parents all want the same thing for their kids and they just want their child to be successful and they want to be able to trust the school to do their job. And I love being out there, I love talking to people, I love the children. That's what gives me the confidence to do my job. Most places, teddy bears are a good thing. Not in South Memphis. Here, each of these teddy bears has been left in memory of someone who died nearby. We try not to dwell on the negative. We have to acknowledge it, though, in order to help people. Like it or not, school principals have to work with what the neighborhood gives them. The rusting bridge, the crime rate, the shattered lives. She was one of my cheerleaders. Um, prior to graduation, a boy that she was dating was killed. In her junior year, her cousin had got killed. I get it. Sometimes when they just make it through the front door, that's the hugest accomplishment. <laughs> In 2006, the graduation rate here at Booker T. Washington High School was barely 50 percent, one out of two. Cool. How long y'all think y'all can better stand right here? Go home. Then Alicia Kiner took over. Bye. Four years later, eight out of ten got their diploma. <laughs> Bye, get off. Yo, that's what I want them to see is resilience, because this is a heavy job. Hello, everybody. Kiner did such a great job, the president showed up to thank her for the hard work. I am so proud you made it, and not just through high school. You made it past Principal Kiner. Thursday morning at Joe T. Huffman Elementary School in, you guessed it, seven years ago, this was a school on the way down. Low test scores and lousy discipline sent people packing. Hey, big man. Then Principal Len Stevens came to town. OK, well, we got two new classrooms opening up tomorrow. So it was a school that was in trouble. We had a lot of folks in the community that were picking up, and they were leaving. Call it what you want, call it white flight give it the term that you want to give it. Have you all had time to think about the goals you want to discuss as a team? And I couldn't have turned this school around without the autonomy that I was given at the district level to, for lack of a better word, hire fire. Two school principals, Len Stevens in Plano, Texas, and Alicia Kiner in Memphis, Tennessee, accomplished what many thought was impossible. They rescued struggling public schools. How do they do it? Here are a few tricks of the trade. How are you going to do it? Are you going to use the same ones? Or you gonna... This might be the best family they've ever had, or the closest thing to a family. You beat one more time, you're going to know about it. At Booker T. Washington High School, biology teacher Erica Davis' work doesn't end at the schoolhouse door. You don't want to get involved in students' personal lives? You're at the wrong place. Here, everyone is family. I'm the mama, I get that. But the teachers are my sisters and brothers, so they're the aunts and uncles. They support me, they help me not to blow it so bad. I told y'all. The students are expected to play a part also. Here's what Principal Kiner tells incoming freshmen. Well, we say look to your left and look to your right. When that person is not here, you're responsible for telling me why. It's your job, it's your duty. At Booker T, you are your brother's and sister's keeper. What's up? How are you? The first thing you'll notice about Huffman Elementary Principal Len Stevens, he's a world-class hugger. You ready for a great day today? I like to hug because I like to make the children feel like, hey, they're welcome here at Huffman, and they, I want them to know that I love them and care about them deeply. Oh, you all playing Saturday? Kids are just the beginning. They just draw names out of the hat. Len Stevens knows the wise principal also gets to know the parents. Did she just follow her? If you're going to know the child, to know the child, you have to know the mother. Yes. 
If you don't know the mother, okay. you'll never right. know the child. Appreciate the follow-up. Hey, you bet. Okay. Oh, gosh. Are you okay? A mother calls. Her newborn baby has died. I know. What can we do for you? It's her little girl's in kindergarten, and she doesn't know how to tell her. Len consults with Huffman School counselor Tonya Grant. I told okay. mom that you and I, or you, mm -hmm. would sit with her with me okay. and either tell me together, or you might be able to give mom some tips about yes. in this situation or some resources to use. This okay. is how you tell a child. You just have to love on her a lot. Yeah. We're going beyond knowing the child. We're, we're getting to know the family. And if we help the family, we help the child and the child be successful in school. And that's 60 seconds. At Booker T, even a class change can be a teachable moment. Where are you supposed to be? Today's lesson? Y'all can't make it. Be on time. I know you can't. You don't even look fast enough. We have people stationed on all floors to do what I just did. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up! Just stand here and say, let's go, let's go. Oh, uh, no, mm-mm, they're not gonna make it. We want instructional time to be preserved. She brings tons of energy to the school, and I think everyone here feeds off that. So you have a character and a story telling the story. Look around Eugene Pollock's English One class, nothing but boys. There's a reason for that. We were losing them in ninth grade. So we had to do something. OK, fellas. A few years back, Alicia Kiner looked at her failing ninth graders, read the research, and stole an idea. Separate the boys from the girls. It worked in other places. Why not Memphis? Wow. The teacher's reaction? The reaction was, yeah, yeah, let's go, let's go. How many of you have heard the word omniscient before? Alicia didn't ask for permission to launch her bold experiment. She just did it. Not everyone was a believer. She received so much flack from so many different people about gender specifics. Flack or no flack, the bottom line was simple enough. Would kids learn better? Would test scores improve? Look, they shot up. Literally, they shot up. And four years later, the payoff. The first class who was separated by gender is the class who had the 81.6% graduation rate. The first person is, an, is the narrator's oh, part of the story. Alicia's not just hanging out in Eugene Pollock's English class, she's evaluating Pollock's teaching style and searching for ways to do things better. I monitor, we adjust, we monitor, we adjust. When we find something that works well, we work it to death. <laughs> Alicia types in her observations on her iPad. Meanwhile, 450 miles south, Len Stevens uses his cell phone to do the same thing. Parker, how many can we put in each box? Um, five. Five. It's very cool. Probably the most powerful thing we've had to really see what's going on in the classroom. Now that I am big, I can ride my motorbike. Now for three or four minutes, I'm gonna watch a snippet of what she does. And over the course of the year, if I do enough of these three or four minute walkthroughs, it'll give me a complete picture of what kind of teaching job she's doing in the classroom. Okay, that's good stuff. Here at Huffman, they take it one child at a time. The emphasis is not on test scores, but on individual growth. I've got my readers, I've got my letter games over here. First they find out what each kid knows. Are you writing them? And then they help them improve. And reaching those kids and growing them from the beginning of the year to the end of the year is what it's all about. We are all about the growth of children. There's no cookie cutter curriculum at Huffman, not even in kindergarten. So when children who are just learning their ABCs share a classroom with children reading at a higher grade level, teachers adjust. When I plan my lessons, I have to make sure that I'm preparing for every single level of child that I have. You can't educate three ability levels easily within one classroom. That's what we're trained to do. That's what a good teacher, a master teacher, can do. Five, six, 
There's a term for this multi-level teaching approach. It's called differentiation. Okay. What do we have left? It's worked. It's worked beautifully. We have to show kids that they've been practicing the art of persuasion. I'm an English teacher in my former life, <laughs> so I'm the English uh, department, because this was hard to teach. It's Wednesday, time for the weekly meeting of all Booker T. English teachers. Think of a story, almost like a fable. Today's topic, a formula for the perfect essay. No, once kids come up with the reasons they believe whatever they believe, the essay is written. It's just a matter of plugging in the pieces at that point. You know, we just try different tactics until we get it, until we find our niche. Archaeologists and anthropologists put this information together. They Some call what has happened at Booker T a miracle. Alicia Kiner calls it a good start. 81.6% of the kids graduated. So I've done 81.6% of my job. It needs to be 100%. Take those flags off. Saints on the way. <laughs> so how did they do it? How did Len Stevens and Alicia Kiner turn their schools around? Everybody keeps coming back to the same thing. Whether in Plano, Texas, or Memphis, Tennessee, it all begins and ends with relationships. Hey, guys. How you doing, big man? You shaking my hand? We build relationships and build relationships and build relationships with students, parents, and each other. That's all we do all day long. If you notice, with the starting in the morning with the kids, the smiling at them, the hugging them, checking on them. It's all about relationship building. How you doing? It's so nice you took your shirt in. And when all the relationship building is done, all right, y'all keep working. Something magical can happen. It stopped becoming a school, and it became a group of individuals within a building that we treat as family. When you go outside, do not loiter. Keep walking and don't stop until you get to your mama's front porch. Thank you. And in the end, it was not the principals alone, of course, but rather that school family, that community, working together that turned the schools around. We are not the statistics of the zip code. This is a good place. It's a good feeling in the building. We're a family. We're a warm, friendly environment. We have fantastic teachers. We have fantastic kids. And I want to have an impact on their lives. <laughs>